Hi everyone! I'm gonna start off by saying that even though I'm gonna be killing the zombies in the graveyard here, this is not the Cone of Cold farm. I'm not gonna be using Cone of Cold whatsoever in this farm actually. And the reason for that is not because of some dumb challenge where, where I wanna kill them only using Arcane Explosion. It's simply because this is way better. Now, how to actually get to the graveyard and all of that, I'm gonna go through later in this video. First of all, I'm just gonna show you how I do the graveyard farms. And as you can see by the timer in this, in the top right corner, it took me about 2 minutes and 15 seconds to get here. Now I can start opening the tombs. Now what you normally do is you open the amount of tombs that you can handle when with Cone of Cold Farm and then you kill them. But what I'm gonna do is open all the tombs and then I'm gonna kill all at once. But let's start looking at how I open the tombs. So this place where I'm at right now is one of the reset points. They can't reach at all on this ledge. And for some reason I decide to jump onto this guy's face. So I've opened all the tombs on the right side and now I'm gonna take all the ones on the left side. So what I do is stick to the left and if there are zombies spawned like there you gotta be careful when opening these but luckily that's not the case for me right now. So I just run across them, I right click everything once and he, he she hits me and then I blink and almost mess up. Now the reason why I blinked like I did, we're actually gonna pause here, is because you can run between that pot and this wall, however they can't. So you can just sneak through and get on top of this ledge and that's gonna save you time. That was what I was trying to do but didn't succeed. So I had to use a cone of cold to get up here but no harm is done. Now while you're waiting here by the way, you should take the time to conjure water or mana gems or anything you might need. And combat just dropped so now I'm gonna get the last ones. Now what I usually do is start with that tomb and I wait for her to reset, or not reset, but walk away. And she's not gonna be a problem. We're just gonna pull when she's not around. Start with this one and then I keep running, opening up all the tombs. And I tried to go for that tomb and I got it this time, but it could be a bit close sometimes. So let's, let's calm down here, cowboy. All of them are opened and now we're gonna get up here again. And now... We're gonna do some parkour on this guy's face. So to get up here you start by jumping onto his maybe tusks or something. And then you go from the tusks to the forehead. And from the forehead to this ledge here and up onto this wall. Now what we're gonna continue doing is try and jump up there. So we gotta jump into this ledge, this crack. And while you're doing that, don't press any movement buttons while in the air. You press the movements button while, um, no like this, only press the movements button while you're in the air. Don't press them when you're about to land or when you're jumping. And that's how we're gonna get up here. So what I'm gonna do now is pull those, well not him, with a blizzard and then I'm gonna pull them and then I'm gonna go to my secret place. So let's look at that. Here I'm using rank 1 blizzard and I just activated Mage Armor by the way because I'm not gonna take any damage so I don't need that. Then we're gonna jump back here and when you're a bit lower level you're gonna pull that guy but we'll get to how you deal with that. So that's how I pulled them and they are gonna chain pull a lot of the other packs. I blistered the ones by the wall and those come as well. That pack over there usually doesn't chain pull so we have to pull them let's say manually. Now there is rank 1 blizzard again to try and collect them together. And by the spot right there is where they're gonna go from the wall, well from the hill onto the wall. So that's a great place to collect them and to deal damage to them. The jump I'm gonna do now, you need to practice that if you're gonna do this. If you don't have any movement speed whatsoever, it's gonna be hard. Now I happen to have minor movement speed on my boots and those 8% are just what you need. And they cost like 5 gold to make that enchant. So get it. And as you can see they are very collected now. So I'm gonna jump back and then I'm gonna max rank blizzard by that place. There we go. And as you can see they group up quite nicely. 
Now, depending on how close to you they are, you might want to try and go for a second blizzard, or you just jump back. The best place to use blizzard, and there as you can see I just got hit and dazed, but that doesn't matter. If you were doing a cone of cold farm, you would be done now. This would be it. GG. However, I can just jump down and still have time to make my way back. I'm gonna do blizzard at this sweet spot, and as you can see they are very collected right now. So, you just AOE this down, basically, and I think you got the gist of it. That 425 experience points, that's from the non-elites, the fallen heroes. The elites themselves give... Well, we're gonna see how much they give, actually. As you can see, I'm 6 minutes and 12 seconds in, and I've... I know that for a fact that you need to do about 220k damage, so... All the zombies are half dead by now. And as you just see, I used Evocation, and you're gonna have time to use that, and you're gonna need to use it. And your max rank gem. I just keep blizzarding them down. As you can see, they're green, but that doesn't matter, because this experience is still insane. Then we're gonna jump back again, and this is how we're gonna do it. Just juggle it back and forth. The build, the talent build, by the way, is just standard uh, Frost Mage aoe -ing. So here I wait for them, maybe unnecessarily, to run past that sweet point so I can AoE them all down. And as you can see, they kind of split up, but that is because they're so low on health that... And there you can see the experience, by the way, so maybe 550 on average per mob, and there's a lot of mob. So you can see the experience bar has moved roughly one and a half bars but then you need to take into account that I dinged and I was roughly one and a half bar away from dinging so what you're looking at right here is three bars of experience at level 49 to 50 in less than eight minutes that's fast that's really fast just need to finish the last guy off and now just go and loot everything now, in case you kill them on the wrong spot, then you might not be able to loot them. But so, this is my way of doing the Sulfurak Graveyard Farm, and this farm is absolutely insane. When you're at the peak of experience gain here, I found that I could do maybe, and I'm not shitting you now, I could do 160k an hour. Really, really quick. So we're gonna look at a clip when I am a lower level where I talk about how to get to the graveyard and all of that. Uh, I'm not gonna do everything as smoothly in that pull, in that run, but it's gonna work out anyway. So let's jump over to that. Alright, so what we're gonna look at now is a clip from when I am level 44 and doing this. And by this level I wasn't as good at it, I hadn't figured anything out, but I'm still gonna make it. So what you start off by doing is buff Frost Armor, especially, and Arcane Intellect, and you drink and eat. Especially eat full. You don't have to have full mana, but you need to have enough for your mana shield to absorb things. So I just started the timer, I'm gonna apply my shields, and we're gonna mount up. And then we're gonna start running to the first safe spot. And if you're lucky you can squeeze between the two first packs just like I did. But this pack you can't skip. And what you might have noticed is that whenever something is gonna hit me, I try and face it. Because if they hit you from behind, there is a quite a high chance that they're gonna daze you. And if you get dazed, you're in a rough situation. You're not necessarily gonna die, but it definitely increases the odds of that happening. So here is the first safe spot. And one thing to consider is that you need to hide behind it completely and... If you're a rather large character, like maybe a, a uh, male troll, then maybe you can't hide. And one way to deal with that is to use things like Deviate Fish, right? That turns into a human, because humans have pretty small hitboxes, actually. Another trick is to simply sit down, which I'm doing here. And I'd recommend either making a macro, if you have keybind and something to X, or just press X. Personally, I've placed my evocation on X. 
Another thing you can do when you're waiting for the aggro to reset here is to conjure your mana gems, conjure water, conjure food, and just get that done while you're waiting. You also want to watch out for ranged mobs, because you need to line of sight them properly, and totems. They can also mess you up. Usually that's not a problem. When it comes to this place, I chose to pull the guys on the right side instead of pulling the guys on the left side. Here I jump over the pod and manage to not get a single blow from them. Now what I'm doing here, we're actually gonna pause. Go back just slightly. I'm gonna jump on that thing and that's gonna be okay, but there are some blocks that if you jump on them, you're gonna get dismounted. And as far as I know, there's actually only one of them, so we're actually gonna go back and look at that one, cause this could save your life. Let's see now. I think I'm gonna turn and look at it very soon here. Ooh, damn it. Move up again. It's kind of important, that's why I want to show you it. That block. If you jump and land on that, the game thinks that you're inside and you're gonna be dismounted. And then you might gonna be able to blink your way towards the safe spot, maybe a Frost Nova and hide. Or you're just gonna die, so don't do that. Let's go back... Here is roughly where we are now. I just jumped on them. I'm gonna keep going and... If a mob is about to hit me, you wanna jump and try and face it. And as you can see on the timer, we're less than 3 minutes in. We're closer to 2 minutes and we're not far away from the graveyard now. So this is a quick run and... You're gonna need to practice a bit, but it's not too hard. It's gonna be trickier when you're lower level and everything pulls, but it's definitely doable. Now, what I'm gonna do here, which is a waste of time, is I'm first gonna reset, and then I'm gonna activate the boss and reset again. And you activate the boss by simply going inside his sanctum, like passing that yellow line, and then going out, and jumping onto one of these reset points. Now, what I just should have done was run into his place and then reset on the ledge over there. What I have to do now instead is jump up here, wait for combat to reset and then activate him and that's just a waste of time. But like I said earlier, what you should do in a situation like this is conjure your water, conjure your mana gems. And there we go, we just dropped combat so now we can activate the boss and as you can see here the way you activate him is to simply enter go out and jump onto this ledge to reset them. Normally two zombies spawn when you activate him, but if you get out of his, if you manage to reset him like this, uh, no more zombies are gonna spawn. So we're gonna wait for combat to end. And now we're gonna pull the right side here, and the way we're doing this is to simply open all the graves. Now because we activate the boss, the mobs are gonna run to the boss first, and then they're gonna go for you. So open all the chests, all the graves I mean there, plink over here and make my way to the safe spot. Now obviously, as you saw earlier, there is a safe spot on the other side of the sanctum, but you're gonna be very close to like 14, 12, 10, 14 zombies. So if they get in a single hit each, you're dead and that sucks. So just go to this side. And now they just reset it. And now we're gonna go for the left side so just sneak your way up here, make your way over there, and if zombies have spawned from the top right graves there too far upwards, just skip these. But I find it okay here, and it turns out to be okay, so just open all these graves as well. You go over them, you click them once. You're not gonna get the loot when you're just opening them. As you know, there are loots inside of it, but um, it doesn't really matter. It's not worth much at all. And the time you're saving... Well, you've seen how effective this farm is. There's really no reason at all to Cone of Cold farm them instead. It's not faster. Uh, it's not more profitable. It's not safer. This is just the way to go, in my opinion. Now, as you know, might have noticed... Actually, we're gonna get there soon. There is a grave. For some reason, I skipped that one. You don't have to do that. You can just go up so... Because then you line of sight everything over there, open that tomb, and then go for these, but maybe I haven't figured that out by this time. Open all the graves, and I'm not sure if I opened that one, I think I did, but if the mobs are getting too close to you, you can just trust Nova, and there things happen quickly. 
So what you're gonna do now, there's no reason to wait for combat to reset, is that you're gonna parkour on this guy's face. You go for the tusks first, and then you can... Jesus. And then you can go for... Sorry about that. Tusks first, then his forehead, and then that ledge, and then this ledge. And when you're gonna do this jump, you do the jump, but before you land, you release all keys. I don't, don't be clicking W, A, S, D, or anything like that when you're landing. And don't click anything when you're jumping. You just move in the air. That's very important when doing this jump. That's very important when doing the jump in many other places as well. And this is a bit tricky, but just get at it. And eventually you're going to be able to get up to the next wall. And it seems like I'm going to have especially big troubles with it this time. There we go. I don't know exactly like at which angle you should be going or whatever. Uh, and what I'm doing here is just way less inefficient than what you can do. So as you might have noticed on the first clip, we're going to go back a bit. When you are up on this ledge, stand over there. And then you blizzard pull the pack over there. And then you do a blizzard into the sanctum. You can try and avoid the boss, but he's probably gonna pull anyway. To pull the mobs that are over there. And that's how you pull them. And then you run around and go to that ledge. We're gonna skip the section where I miserably try and fail. Well, I try and fail. Here I have to reset. I think I get it about here, maybe. I do. Okay, so now I managed to pull all the mobs and I'm standing on this ledge. You might have noticed mage armor and the reason for that is that we're not gonna take any hits, but we do need mana, so more mana regeneration is great. We've pulled all the mobs and they're gonna be coming to us now. There's something over roughly there that I should show you. Those guys up there usually aren't body pulled by the rest of these. So you're gonna have to stand maybe there and do a blizzard that just hits them. And that's gonna pull them. And there we go. Usually the fallen heroes aren't linked either. And sometimes if you get too far out on these things, they just believe that they can't reach you for whatever reason. Uh, and if I would you, if you would have pulled the mobs when you were standing up there, you would have those as well. As you can see here. They go from the hill to the ledge, so that's a great place to collect them. And when it comes to this jump, as I said earlier... Um, well, I didn't say it earlier, but... Before you start the farm, you need to practice this jump. You should do it like 30 times. Because you don't want to fail this. And you should absolutely have the minor speed increase and shant on your boots. Because if you don't, you're gonna have a hard time. I find it rather easy actually with the minor speed. They, maybe they just give you the edge you need to make this reliably. But if you don't have it, you're gonna struggle. So just get the speed enchant on your boots. Okay, let's keep watching. So this gives us a place to just juggle them back and forth. And here I just keep collecting them because maybe I'm too obsessed with having them packed together. And they are very nicely packed together there. Then you jump down, and what I just used, by the way, that inside buff, we can go back just a little bit. I'm gonna click my chest, and that chest is gonna reduce the mana cost of my next, next cost by 500. So that's a useful buff to have once every 15th minute. And here you can see, just blizzard them down. Now depending on how far they get on your first blizzard, you either only do one, or you feel like you have time to do the second. Another bad thing I'm doing here is that I'm turning my back towards them. You shouldn't do that until you start running. Because if that maybe fallen hero would have gotten in one attack, that could have dazed me, and it wouldn't have killed me, but it would waste my time. So, if you feel like it's risky, well, first of all, interrupt your blizzard and jump instead. Don't die, it's not worth it. But if you're feeling like playing the risky game, don't turn around until you're gonna start running. I make the jump, and if you're quick, you can just keep blizzarding them on the way back. 
and then you can jump again and start a new blizzard. And by doing that, you can kill them rather quickly. As you can see, we're eight minutes in, and this pack is... I don't even know where it is. It's maybe at 60%. And as you can see, by the way, that 11,112 was because I had blue experience. Uh, what I just killed were the non-elites, two fallen heroes. And then we just blizzard at the good spot again. And as you just noticed, my mana is going low. And you're gonna need your mana gems, you're gonna need evocation. And you're gonna need mage armor. And you're gonna need gear with intellect and spirit. You don't want gear with intellect and stamina here. Because you're not taking any hits. And even if you were, they would just insta-kill you no matter how much health you had. So, what you want is pieces that are of the Owl, because that's Intellect and Spirits. Now, while you're making your way to the graveyard, then Stamina is a great option, because it's going to keep you alive. It's not going to... it's going to help you not be one-shotted. But while you're here, you want pieces with Intellect and Spirits. And as I'm sure you know... Um, Spell power is very weak. It doesn't scale well at all with uh, Blizzard. So just go for Intellect and Spirit. There we go. We're killing them off. And for some reason I insist upon using rank 1 Blizzard to collect them. That's not important. They're going to collect themselves. And because they go in that like U-shaped movement. Uh, they're going to get hits for almost the entire duration of your max rank Blizzard anyway. When it comes to gear and specs, I'm not using any particular things really. Uh, this would be done with pretty much any gear possible. You can probably do this without gear as well. Gear just speeds it up and helps you from going oom. As for the talents, it's the, let's say, standard Frost Mage AoE build. And as you just have maybe saw, seen, as you maybe just see, saw, whatever, do you see the experience there? It was roughly 760 from a single elite and I think there is about I don't even remember if there's maybe 40 uh, there you can see the insane experience 820 between 760 and 822 per mob so we're actually gonna go back a little bit and look at wow so as you can see we're roughly you know between that number there and the character info screen whatever almost a full bar there remember that the bar is there and just see how much it moves forward so there, you, there you go a whole bar we're not even we haven't even killed half of them that's two bars almost more than two bars we still have a whole bunch left and what i just did by the way was using my second gem so you can have a gem of your max rank and you can have a gem of your n second highest rank which you're gonna need um, but you can always just jump back and forth and let your mana regeneration do its thing. Okay, so there we go. We're past that bar. And for these last mobs, I'm just using the wand. And if I wouldn't have insisted on using so many rank 1 uh, blizzards to try and collect them, which really didn't do much in the end, then I would have had enough mana to do another max rank blizzard and they would all be dead by now. So we're actually gonna go forward quickly to get the last experience. Something like there. And then we're gonna pause. Okay. Remember where we started. It was there. And I happen to know that before I started, I think I'm at roughly 89k now. I was at 59k. That's 30k experience in less than 12 minutes. You see the, the mana bar... The mana bar... The, Experience bar moved from there all the way to there, and that's a single pull. That's one, two, three, four, five bars, and we could have gotten even more. That's one, two, three. It seems like there would be two names, maybe. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's definitely two. Seven and a half. So I could get another 5k experience if I had pulled them properly. And maybe there's one behind the ledge, we don't know. Maybe I could have gotten a whole nother bar. Now this is like... This is like being level 8 again, you know? Probably even lower. Probably level 5, you know? Okay, maybe not level 5, but... 
getting this much experience in one pull in less than 12 minutes, that doesn't exist at this level. This farm is absolutely insane. And that's literally insane, I mean it. We can actually do some math on this, so... Um, as you can see, we're, we're probably gonna be at about 12 minutes by the time I've looted everything and that I've uh, done the reset trick with a friend, friend. But if you can get just 30k per pull and do 5 pulls an hour, that's 150,000 mana. No, experience. And we still have another 25k that we just wasted. We're looking at 175k experience at an hour. You know, suddenly the levels, and we're gonna get into that actually right now, the levels 42 to 54, because that's how long you should do this, suddenly they become very quick. Like maybe you could do those in 16 hours. And this is way easier than the, uh, the Cone of Cold farm as well. So, you know, this is just insane. And I'm gonna show you a clip soon where I show one of the drops you can get. Um, maybe I got, I don't know, a total of 400, 500 gold when I did this from level 43. I think I began or discovered it, found, figured it out uh, until 54 when I realized that half of the mobs are now gray. But I think the, the level range down is 9 levels, so 54, yeah, then the guys that are level 43, they're gonna be gray for you, and... I mean, by then, you could probably still do 60-70k an hour, so it's not bad, but it's just not absolutely insane anymore. So, before I end this video off, I want to show you one of the drops that you can get here, the Underworld Band, which I haven't sold it yet as of this video's making, maybe it's gonna be sold when I log in after posting this video, but it seems to be going for roughly 200 gold. Now, you can't get the Edge Master's Handguard from this, but the experience, as I said, is still insane. You know, um, I did some math and like the theoretical maximum, you're probably looking at... Actually, let me just click that into this. 35k, 5 runs, 175,000 experience an hour. And that will potentially, if you're good at this, allow you to take maybe a 5-10 minutes break per hour. We're actually gonna go look for... We're gonna look at that one. It's not necessarily bad that you're gonna get instance capped. Because that allows you to take a break. Like, you don't... There's no reason to keep playing for maybe 10 minutes because you still need to wait for that um, lockout to be over. And that's really nice to be able to take a break. Now, a very good tip is to have your Hearthstone in Gadgetzan. And the way you want to reset, in case you didn't know, is that you invite someone to the group, you give them leader, you log out, and once you're logged out, they reset. And what's going to happen is that the instance is going to reset and you log in at the entrance to the dungeon. Like I said, talents, just a standard uh, Frost Mage AoE build, nothing special at all, you don't need it. Uh, for the gear, you want stamina gear so you can get here, but once you're here, you want intellect and spirit and then you want to run with mage armor up make sure to have both the highest rank gem and the second highest rank gem ready as well as evocation and i hope you're finding this helpful and maybe you're excited to make a mage or try this method out on your mage i wish you luck with that i hope you enjoy this video now if you would be so kind to like and subscribe that would help me out out and i want to say just a few words to um well to the ones who actually care about me and not only about the graveyard farm uh i've been away for quite a while now from making videos i haven't been traveling or anything i've just been very very low on energy and didn't have any you know i just hadn't i just didn't have an energy to do any videos whatsoever uh, i have been still farming i mean <laughs> I mean, uh, streaming somewhat reliably. So make sure to check that out. There is the link in the description to my stream. Thanks for stopping by and uh, I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.